We're here on the Fulton 122. Uh, yesterday was Toby's first day here. This is a sweet farm. It has the big buck vibe. I mean, it is gnarly and it kind of feels like three different farms almost. It's very different types of areas. You got this big overgrown, sweet habitat. You've got a classic Illinois Creek bottom. You've got hardwood ridges and then you've got tillable flats. I noticed yesterday too, like on the neighbor, neighboring pieces, like right here, you got a big crop field. And up on this side, you got a big crop field. And up behind us, you got a big crop field. And then this is like the bowl, like the, yeah. the sanctuary, the thicket, like, and then and all these deer live here and they're, they're leaving the thicket to go feed. One of the coolest things about this place, 10 or 12, 15 years ago or something, the owner of this place had like hair scramble uh, dirt bike races. It's crazy because it basically created these travel corridors everywhere. I mean, they're just pounding them. Every corner you come around, you're like, oh, we can do this or we can do that, we can do this. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to fine tune some of that today. Got a big steep wall on this side of the creek and a big giant steep wall right here. And it's only like a 50 yard gap. And you can see all the deer traffic that's already using this. And this is going to get super thick down here. And this is this is the type of creek that you can actually use as access walking. I mean, it's not deep. Yeah. It's all hard bottomed. It's not it's not full of stuff that's hung up in it. So you walk down this whole bottom in the creek bottom. It kind of reminds me of the time I was guiding for Toby years ago. Many years ago. <laughs> he already knows the story. Yeah. And the freaking 190 inch 10 pointer. We went down in there to hang a gun stand for somebody and we were tiptoeing down the creek. All of a sudden I saw a flash like on this tree that was leaning out of a ditch that came into the creek. And I'm like, hey. And he was in front of me and he goes, as he turns, the deer stood up and stuck his head out in the, tr in the creek and turned. And I'm like, and he saw my eyes and he's like, and he turned back around and we just stared at this 190 inch deer like 30 freaking yards. Yeah, we were trying to slip in there. We knew that deer was in there. We were trying to get in there close and then we used that creek and obviously we got close. <laughs> the deer takes off and he turns back around and he goes, you will never see a deer that big again in your life. <laughs> So right up the hill yesterday, we saw like 160 inch deer come out of this south facing thicket. This is right off the neighbor's cornfield. It's all hidden, creek crossing. Got an old trail system that comes in right here. We're gonna try to get it all with one camera. The most classic spot ever for one to be bedded. That is just begging for a stand. Yeah. I mean. This is one of the remnants of the old dirt bike trails right here. And the deer are freaking pounding it. That, and that's the trail that, that that buck came out of yesterday when we saw it was right down that old trail. And usually you don't have a tree that is just so perfect. So we just came from the creek over here and there's this trail runs the entire length of this south side of this property all the way down here to the southwest corner. This is all south facing gnarly thick. There's ag fields out here in these bottoms. The bucks are just gonna cruise this inside the cover, scent checking the downwind side of this on anything north and trying to cut those tracks going to and from this field. You get into those days where they're running around with their tongues hanging out, they're not gonna be running through that. They're gonna be just using the wind. I mean, this is one of those spots here you have double digit buck sits. I like that this is, the road's kind of on a, on a high spot. Not only is a buck set checking the thicket, but visually he can see any does that might be in the bottom. This field just has all the movement in it to do whatever you want. It's a blank canvas, different types of food sources coming together. If you didn't want to hunt in a box, there's literally a huntable tree every 20 yards. Look at that thing. This farm lays so big. I mean, you're so far from here. You'd have, you could have standing food on both ends and have two totally different yeah. groups of deer. I mean, yep. you are back here. A lot of times we talk about like thickening a part of the south facing hillside that's got the perfect structure. That's what we're talking about. Like that little structure. Like, I mean, those are just like 
perfect little knobs and stuff for a big deer to bet on. The other thing is this, this is another main road that's gonna come off of that tillable. This is where the start of that thicket is. So like this is another key road, you know, with anything south wind, cruising this road, checking that whole thicket and stuff. This road, the thicket, the hardwoods, it all meets down here. We're gonna show you the spot. What a backdrop. Yeah. I mean, I even think that that is the, I think that's the perfect height where that 20 foot ladder will just end up right exactly where it needs to be. Do you see this? Holy cow. Look, comes right out of the thicket. I mean, you shoot every deer on the farm in the rut in this one tree. Here's how you know that there has not been a lot of hunting pressure on this, nor has there been any serious hunting pressure because that tree there should have old tree spikes in there and then it should have an old radio tower ladder that's dangling off the side. Pile of boards at the bottom of it. And then it should have, you know, a little bit, the next era of hunting, maybe some uh, rabbit rails. And then, you know, there should be three stands grown in up there in the leaders and maybe a, a nice fresh millennium ladder. Right where Bobby's standing next to you right now, he's got big scrapes under it already. He's just kind of walking around, he's painting the perimeter of this, this plot that we want here. Get a couple of these smaller trees pushed out of here, build up a wall on this other side, and then have a tree coy probably right here with a box blind that you come in from the back side. Central food plot, check-in point, concentration is set. Pretty much can hunt this whole side of the farm here, just out of this one box. The classic vine scrape. Gigantor. We always talk about kind of building the spots around what deer are wanting to do naturally. And concentrations of scents, another thing we're always talking about. Um, well, that scrape is right there because there's a huge concentration of scent funneling through this old opening here, and they're crossing the creek. You know, there's a trail coming off the point there. There's road, everything's dumping in here. Even without a food plot here, you go shoot a big deer in here in, in the rut. Up on this hillside here, and you see how open it is in comparison to this side of the farm. We're gonna peck through here and kind of take out some of these white oaks, let some light in and try to get these hillsides to start to thicken up. We are just up there marking trees and, and deer were just scooting out of there. We want there to be more cover up there. They already like to be on that hill, so we're just gonna make it a little bit more attractive for them to be up on some of these knobs on this side of the farm. So we just wrapped up the north half of the Montgomery farm and uh, Toby and land guys listed it and it got an overwhelming response and it sold in the first day at asking price. We actually have another 80 there that's adjacent to it that we haven't even started um, developing. And Toby told several of the people about the other piece and they all wanted to see it. That sold again in the first day. We showed it a few times. Sold above asking actually, and the guy that ended up going under contract to buy it, he had talked to me the night before, and he talked to Toby. And being on the front end of the project, he's going to be able to tailor that that farm to his needs. So if you're interested in 120-ish acres, 122 acres up here in Fulton County, just west of Peoria, get a hold of us. Uh, we'd love to show you this place, kind of here at the beginning of development, and maybe. Uh, tailor the farm to your specific needs. It's a killer farm, awesome hunting, has the big buck vibe, great cabin site and recuse out front that doesn't affect the back. Gorgeous creek that runs through the whole place. Um, it's one of those upper percentiles of, of rec farms.